Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. I'm going to show you in this video what is new in our latest release of Camera Bag. This is in both Pro, Camera Bag Pro and Camera Bag Photo version 2021.2. Um, so uh, let's get right into it. I've got this photo loaded. I'm using some photos from Elia Pellegrini on Unsplash. Definitely go check them out. Um, and I've just got a few things already loaded up on this photo. One is our uh, new lens flare from our last update, uh, which is this awesome adjustable lens flare, which can do some neat things. Um, but anyway, what we've got new in camera bag 2021.2 is this new text overlay, um, which you can use for lots of different things. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, so it just starts up, it loads up with this sort of um, filler text and um, just this default size. And this size, by the way, is relative to the document. It's not an actual pixel size. So um, basically, if you have something that's size like, you know, 50 on an image, when you go to another image, I'll just hit right on my keyboard to load other images, even if they're different dimensions and different... Um, uh, aspect ratios for different overall pixel sizes, it will scale it to look approximately the same um, based on the sort of width and height of, of the image. So that's a very handy thing. Um, now uh, let's just um, change this text to something. Uh, maybe visit Italy. There we go. Let's pretend this is an ad for Italy. And um, so like I say, you can adjust the size easily right here. Here's the font choosing. And so a couple nice things about this one is that just as you hover over these, it will change the font. Um, so it makes it easy to just sort of see it without having to click a bunch. But then you can also just press up and down on the mouse or on the keyboard and that will go between them. And I actually like the font that I have first in here. Um, and like I say, if you have multiple images, you can sort of just test it on them if they're in the same folder by pressing left and right on your keyboard. When I'm doing that, one thing that I like to do is uh, put on this maximum size um, node, and I'll up it to like, well, let's try 1800 and 1600. Um, so that will sort of uh, make my photos all kind of live in the middle of my interface so I can see what it looks like as I arrow through them. Um, if, I don't, if it's a little distracting for them to go full screen when they load. Um, so anyway, let's go back to this. Uh, let me just show you some more of the controls in this text overlay. Um, so we saw the, the uh, editor here, and you can do multi-line, please visit Italy, and it will show a second line. Um, you can, of course, change the color. Um, and then what happens over here is this drop down right here lets you choose between different advanced controls. So it's, it defaults to alignment. So that means that this control over here will be the alignment control. Um, and with alignment, we've got you know all that you would expect uh, on the left, top, mid, bottom, center, top, mid, bottom, right, top, mid, bottom. Um, and again, as you hover over it, it will preview those. But to change the line height, I go to the advanced control and change that to line height. And then this will adjust the line height between these things. And then I can go to opacity, and here's an opacity slider. This just lets us, in the future, we can add um, several different controls in here um, so that uh, they don't crowd up the interface here. So you can have this one drop down to choose which of the advanced controls you want. So let me uh, remove this please from here. Go back to this. Um, so let's see, I think I showed you all those things. Um, the other thing is the positioning. So um, when you have the node selected, you'll see this selection box opens up here and you can drag these like you would expect. It's got snapping. so. Um, this is snapping to these other margins. So if I've got, uh, let me resize this box down. If I want things to have equal margins, um, when it, I just sort of set one that I like and then I can snap the others to it and it will highlight them 
when it's snapping those. Whoops. Accidentally dragged the whole thing. Like that. Um, so anyway, that helps you get equal sort of borders, especially if you're doing an alignment that's like, you know, left to top and you want it to be an equal distance from the top as it is from the left. Um, and so, yeah. Um, one important thing about this also is that these sizes are not stored as pixel sizes. They're stored, again, relative to the pixel size of the image. So you'll notice in this image, um, it's, you know, relative to the text size, and the text size is relative to the pixel size of the width and height. Um, it's approximately that far in from the border. So when I go to a totally different image, it still has roughly that same visual um, distance in from the border. And so it's just set up this way so that these are, you know, camera bag is based on reusable filters. And so um, when we make these not based on hard pixel values, then it can work on basically any image that you throw at it. Um, so uh, let's change this back to center mid. Um, now, uh, and of course, if you want, you can add multiple of these, so you can have more than one text overlay. So let's say, like, uh, in the right bottom, we want something like maybe their uh, website, uh, www.italia.it, I believe, is the site, and then you know, change the font. This looks nice. Sort of find the size for it. And so this will always be positioned in the bottom right with a, a border or a margin rather from the border that looks approximately like that. So when I hit to the right, it's um, even with a different aspect ratio of vertical versus a horizontal one, it puts it down there. And so, like I say, you can see how you can make, you know, tons of social media images or advertising of any sort um, using different resolutions and everything and you, you make one filter for it um, and then you can reuse it over and over again. Um, so uh, let me show you just one other thing. Um, is Let's just use this. I made some presets here. Um, this one is just to show, let me load this remove that and add the haiku preset. Okay, so uh, this is just to show it works nicely with international, like non-English characters. So this is obviously using Japanese. And again, this is, this is a haiku that I found on the internet. I presume this is an accurate Japanese translation, but I cannot promise you that. Uh, Spring is passing, the birds cry, and the fish's eyes are with tears by Matsuo Basho several hundred years ago. Anyway, like with the others, um, as I arrow through this, you can see how this conforms to different um, aspect ratios and image sizes and works nicely. And then just um, one more example of just to give you some ideas of the things that you can do with this um, text stuff. This was sort of like, you know, if you're an architecture firm and you've got a bunch of photos of like, you know, some residents or something. So this is just this text overlay that, you know, this is actually, I got this on Unsplash also, and it is by our, our architects in Melbourne, but I don't know what it was actually called. I made this up right here. Um, but once I add that text overlay node, and it's, you know, again, based on the, the font size is relative to the image dimensions, as is the margin. And so, when I arrow between these, even though they're different aspect ratios, different pixel sizes, um, it will put that nicely down in the corner. Oh, one other thing that I just wanted to show. Let's go back to um, the Italy ones. Uh, and let me bring in this. Okay. Um, it's just that, so like, you know, with these effects, like for example, the lens flare, um, they can come before or after the text overlay. And the lens flare in particular, you're not going to see because it doesn't do anything to pure white. But it, like if the text was, say, um, darker, let me change it on the main text. So if the text is darker, you can see in here that they, um, the lens flare is going over the text and not that you would necessarily want that. 
but for example, um, you can do neat things. Uh, let's, well, that's for the small text. Let's put it about like that. I'm going to pin the text overlays and um, the image. Well, let's not pin the image adjustments. Let's just pin the text overlay. Um, and then when I go into my full screen chooser by hitting F, um, it's nice to be able to see the text with all of the different filters. And so this is a handy thing about having your text overlay stuff be inside of your uh, filter editing environment is because often you're like, you, you might change the font or change how it looks or whatever based on how you're adjusting the photo behind it. And so you can, you know, just sort of see all these, that one's a little bit crazy. But um, one other thing to show with this is just in terms of the order um, is that like if you're doing something like, a, actually let me use the, um, let me use the autochrome filter, which I believe is in classic photography. Yeah, autochrome. So I'll pin this. And so the autochrome filter, it does quite a few things. And it's got a, um, a grain to it. And you can see that when the text overlay is all the way at this end, the grain is applied after it. So the grain gets applied to the text, which can be kind of neat depending on what you're going for. If I move this all the way over here, you can see the text goes on top of everything. But anyway, that's another powerful thing with camera bags kind of built in layering system is that it's easy to, you know, have effects affect other things like text so long as they're placed, you know, in the right order. So play around with it. We hope you'll have a ton of fun. Um, we're excited for all the things that this opens up. Uh, I know there's a lot you can do. And um, just uh, if you have ideas, come up to the help menu and choose send feedback and it will take you to our website where you can send us feedback and let us know what you think, what would you like to see next. Thank you.